What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed. In today's video, we are back for episode four of the painting job recap series with Tim. In today's video, Tim is going to be painting an entire house. But before we get into that, links as always for all the equipment that Tim will be using in this video will be in the comment section and the description. Those are Amazon links. If you click through and purchase anything within the 24 hour period, Tim will earn a small commission and we will both greatly appreciate you for that. I actually have Tim here with me now. Tim, how's it going, man? It's going awesome. It's going great. Awesome, bro. So can you start off by giving us some background on the job? Yeah, this job is a reoccurring client. I painted this house back in 2011 and it's a really good friend of mine. And he had called me recently and was just like, hey, you know, when you got some time, um, can you paint my house again? And so I say, yeah, sure can. Right. And so I see you guys are going back with a gray. Um, is that something that's very popular in California? Because I know over here there's not a lot of gray houses. Yeah, grays are popular over here for sure. For sure. Is there a name for this gray in particular? This particular gray is called Not My Fault, and it's a very popular gray because a lot of gray colors have a blue undertone, but with this gray, there is no blue undertone at all. Not My Fault, that's a pretty creative name for this. Uh, what would you say was the hardest part about this job? The ladder work for sure was the hardest part on this project because there was a lot of navigating on the roof and it had like a tri-level roofing system. So I had to carry a, get on a ladder to get on the roof and bring a ladder with me to put a ladder to get on another section of the roof. So I think that was probably the most challenging of the project. How much prep work goes into something like this? Because when we're watching these videos, all we really get to see is you painting. We don't get to see what happens beforehand. Yeah, I, I typically don't show the prep work because it's kind of, uh, I don't think people want to see that. They want to see the painting, but typically before we come in, first step is to pressure wash the building. And when I say pressure wash, not a high pressure, it's just a low pressure rinse second process would be to go through and putty spackle caulk any kind of imperfections in the wood or stucco or siding right. third step would be to uh, wrap all adjacent surfaces with uh, tape paper plastic or canvas tarps you know whichever type of material you have possible and the fourth step is paint awesome so can you give us an idea of roughly what the cost of materials was on this job probably right about seven hundred dollars for material and that's including paint paper tape most jobs like this will typically run about a thousand dollars, but for this project, we had some stuff left over because it was a project for a, a really good friend of mine. So we tried to utilize some stock material. Okay. Awesome. And then about how much time uh, went into the job to get it completed? So for me and the homeowner, the homeowner helped me throughout the project and he paid for all the paint. So with me and him working on it, it took us about five days. The first day was rinsing the house down and getting it ready for the paint. Right. And so you've obviously painted a lot of houses, Tim. So what advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out in the paint business and maybe like, cause this looks really daunting to be honest, for me looking in as an outsider, would you give any advice to somebody who is just starting? Okay. Now this is golden advice I'm going to give. All right. Prep work is 90% of the project every time you're going into paint. So just make sure that you're really thorough on your prep work because that'll make the painting experience so much more enjoyable and satisfying and it'll get complete in a timely fashion and then that's the best advice i can give just be real thorough on your prep work right and prep work is one of the worst parts of the job in my opinion just because you know who wants to do prep work and it's more fun just to start spraying right absolutely absolutely but every trade you know it has its work the work part right yeah well, it can be fun right that's why they call it work so currently on the screen you are painting this door can you give us an insight on like what went on before you painted and why he went with this orange reddish type of color so yeah the prep work that went into this door is the same as the house you know we rinsed it off as during the pressure wash then you give it a sand sand it down so you can sand down the previous layer of paint that you applied and then the next step is to just um caulk in any kind of imperfection so this door had a lot of uh weathering to where there was gaps in all the trim work on the door so i went through caulked it and put putty and spackle in other spots and then uh put three coats of paint on this particular the reason they chose red is uh red is a is a very another common front door color out here in california and i've heard designers just say like it's good energy for the home to have a red front door i'm not really sure aside from that Right, so we're wrapping up the video now, Tim. Can you go ahead and give us a word of the day? Red door. 
Okay, so the word of the day is Red Door. If you made it this far in the video, comment down below Red Door and I will hashtag you a real one. My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed. Be sure to go check out Tim's channel and subscribe if you like this type of content. Until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace. Peace.